in October of last year, he said the stock market had topped. In March, he said silver was at a peak. Now he says we're headed for a recession. Bob Prechter is the founder, president, and CEO of Elliott Wave International, and he joins us from Atlanta. Bob, welcome back. Well, thanks for having me back. Bob, uh, tell us uh, right now what you're looking at in terms of uh, where you see the market going. Uh, do you think that uh, the market has any resilience? We have yet to really go back and test those major lows of the year. Uh, but uh, some people, they come in in the morning, they take a look at where financial stocks are going, and that tells you where the market is headed. Yeah, those are a big key to where the market's going. I think what I'd like to do in our segment here, I think we've got a great story to tell. We're going to talk about commodities, then we're going to go to the stock market, and then wrap up with some talk about Fannie Mae, which uh, you guys have already been talking about all day, I'm sure. Tell us about silver right now. Tell us about the commodity markets and the relationship between silver and the chart that you're going to present. All right. Well, the first one we'd like to show is the one we had on your program back in March, and this is when silver was peaking out. It's nice news from a... Uh, an analytical standpoint because it shows that, you know, at, at really crucial junctures, the Elliott Wave approach can really be helpful. But what I think is much more important is that from around this time, gold is down 20 percent, silver is down the most 40 percent. Uh, we can see on the next chart the, the current level of silver. Um, most people ignore it because it's not that huge of a commodity. But um, silver is very important. We've, we've done studies going back uh, 30 years and more showing that silver is a very good leading indicator of the economy. As long as it's rallying, uh, the economy is generally expanding. As it's going down, the eco economy is getting closer to recession. If you look at the bottom left of that chart, you'll see the last low in silver was 2001. Guess when? Right in the middle of that recession. So silver's had a dramatic reversal. I think that's one of the industrial commodities indicating a recession coming. But much more important, we've also, as you just said a minute ago, we've got oil down, we've got corn. Now, people were buying corn because of the ethanol boost from the government. It's down over 30 percent. Wheat's down more than 30 percent. I think this whole commodity move is probably over. Now, a lot of people think that's good news, but there are times in history when falling commodities coupled with falling stock prices uh, only happens in very difficult times, such as the early 30s. Are we talking about deflation? Is that the word you want to educate us about today? That's definitely the word that I've been using for a while. Uh, that was in the title of my book, and that's still uh, what I think is coming. Now, we haven't got confirmation quite yet, but for the first time in a while, we've got uh, the trends all going in the same direction. Real estate is falling. We're going to see that a little bit later. We've got uh, the commodities falling. We've just talked about those. And it looks as if we're about to have another leg down in the stock market. And that brings us to the next chart. All right. Let's take a look at that. Let's take a look at your next chart, uh, Bob. And let's see if you can explain that for us. And I just want to ask you, you know, when you talk about the end of the commodity bull run and the deflation prospects, I just want to understand, is this a situation where there is no secular trend that we ought to be paying attention to? You know, a lot of people talk about huge huge demand from emerging economies. Isn't that likely to sustain at least some of the demand? Well, here's what's going on. Your, your term secular is the crucial term here because if you saw today's paper on, on one column on the left, it said uh, wholesale prices showing inflation raging at the highest rate in 20-some years. And on the right-hand column, it said, oh, giant rally in the dollar in the last couple of months. This is relieving pressure. Well, obviously, those two things don't go together in most people's minds. In our minds, they go together perfectly because the markets always lead the fundamentals. So the commodities were soaring over the past year up until a few months ago, and that told us that wholesale prices would go up and then um, the CPI would go up. That's probably going to continue to rise for the next couple of months. But those are lagging indicators of those things. Now that we've got the dollar rallying and, and um, commodities falling, the next thing you're going to start to see um, say a few months down the road later this year, maybe early next, is that the wholesale prices will turn and start hitting lower, and then, and then the consumer prices will follow. All right, so Bob, the secular say, trend that's uh, going on here is a big switch. Okay, and we're going to talk about that big switch in more detail. We are speaking now with Bob Prechter. He is the founder and the CEO of Elliott Wave International. And, Bob, before we get to Fannie Mae and Freddie Mac, I just want to bring up a chart where we take a look at the advanced decline line as well as we're taking a look at the S&P 500. Tell us now why you think this is a weak rally in May. Is this also because we, we don't have it on the same chart, but volume has declined? Yeah, well, this is the chart that we showed again on your show in mid-May. And this was a crucial time because the market had recovered, if you remember, from mid-March all the way up into early uh, and mid-May. There was a little double top there. 
And what we were showing at the time, again, trying to anticipate these changes, not wait till everything blows up in your face. And we said the uh, breadth has been contracting and the volume has been contracting. That suggests a weak rally. Well, now let's go to the next chart and we'll see what happened after that. You can see from mid-May all the way down to mid-July, the, the Dow went down and it went down very seriously and broke the May low. Now, the, um, a, a few weeks ago when you called me and said, hey, you know, you want to do a show, I said, well, I'm not really ready yet. There's nothing going on. Since then, we've had a one-month rally, and I think we have the same indication. So that's why the title is, you know, another week rally. I think what we have here is a one-month recovery. We've got, look at the volume there. It's, uh, if it's on the chart, it has been contracting throughout the rally, uh, still very, very low. Uh, Brett has been nothing to write home about. Now, we can't guarantee it so uh, quite as well on this one because we haven't seen a decline in the ADs. Sometimes you'll see that. But I think what we've been doing is building another shelf for another leg down in the stock market. Now, Bob, I just want to get your thoughts. The, the volume chart was a little bit difficult for, for viewers to, to, to look at. Um, we're talking, what, about a 25 percent decline uh, in volume that has accompanied uh, this rally. Uh, is that number at all significant in terms of where we could go from here, meaning if we're seeing volume fall off as much as we have, what kind of price floor do you think is the next uh, stopping point if indeed we are on the way down? Well, the, the volume, the interesting thing about volume is it tends to ebb and flow with the trend. During the whole bull market, when the rallies would get going, the volume would increase and increase. And every time there was a correction, except for the, the crashes we had, a couple of uh, small crashes, the volume would decrease and dry up, and it would be all ready for new buyers to pour in and push it higher. What we're seeing here is the opposite. Every time the market goes down, the volume builds, and then when it tries to rally, it slackens off. And that says, look, the trend is still down. The volume comes in when prices go down. So that's what's happening. Volume is behind the trend. The trend is down, and when it bounces, nothing is going on. So I think this is telling us that stocks are about to rejoin the commodity market. Now, you notice they're kind of going like pistons. Uh, co commodities will rally and stocks will go down, stocks will go down, commodities will rally. But I think what's happening in 2008 is that overall both of those trends are heading lower. And that's a key to this whole deflationary argument. If that's the, if that's the scenario, Bob, if we're going to look for uh, stocks to, to fall, uh, to follow commodities that you've just described, is there a place that people can seek some shelter? Well, yes. The, the main thing I've been recommending uh, is safe cash equivalents. Now, for people that, you know, have moderate uh, savings, that would mean U.S. Treasury bonds and bills. And the bonds have done very well. Uh, the bills aren't paying a lot, but you know what? It's better than losing money. It's better than being in something like, oh, Fannie Mae. Uh, General Motors, Ford, uh, wheat, you know, corn. These are the things uh, I think that are hurting people's uh, portfolios. And the people that are in safe cash are saying, well, you know, I'm not getting rich, but you know what? I'm not getting poor either, and I'm holding my own here. All right. Well, you provided me with that segue to talk about Fannie Mae and Freddie Mac. Let me ask you, uh, right now we have a situation where the stocks continue to decline, the spreads remain wide over treasuries, uh, and yet we have a situation where many regional banks and also foreign banks and foreign central banks are huge holders of Fannie and Freddie debt. What's the likely outcome, Bob? Well, if we have that last chart, let's throw it up uh, on screen while we talk about it. This is a uh, chart of, of uh, Fannie Mae. Most people show it on arithmetic scale. It's down 95% from its high in 2000. It peaked at 89. Uh, it's now below 450. Um, when you look at it on an arithmetic scale, which we're not showing here, it looks like it's pretty much back at zero. Right. This is algorithmic. Wonder, yeah, this is logarithmic. So people wonder, well, why are these people shorting it at 18? It's already down from 89. That's, isn't that enough? And then it goes to 9, and they're still shorting it. Well, now it's 4.5. And, and this chart shows why. If you look at the low way back in 1981, it was 40 cents. Somebody might look at this today and say, oh, it's got 90% more to go, even though it's down 95%. That's hard to conceive of. But that's what happens in severe, severe bear markets. Now, to answer your question, what this chart is telling us just as, you know, when it peaked early, it said there's a problem coming. When, when a stock goes this low and falls this far, it's, it's telling us, which everybody now knows, it's pretty obvious, that these companies are in serious trouble. They're probably going to go bankrupt and probably would if the government uh, does not decide to step in. And even if they do decide to step in, essentially their, their portfolio may be worth very much less than 
the government thinks it is. Bob, let me just it's ask you. It's not a good you, investment, no matter who does it. No. Okay. Let, let, me, let me just ask you in, in, to respond. To, you know, there, are many, there may be many investors who have followed your work over the, the past several years who have said that, you know, you've been pretty bearish for quite a long time. Uh, how do you respond to that? I mean, eventually the market uh, turns, whether it goes up or down. Uh, is, there, is there some accuracy? If you, have you been a little bit more biased on the bearish side, just generally speaking? Uh, definitely. I wrote a book in 1978 that called for a, a giant bull market, very much like the 20s and a mania, mania at the peak. Uh, and I was bullish for quite a few years, but I turned bearish early, got out and got into cash uh, because I thought it was way overextended. Well, it got more so by multiples than any of the great uh, manias of all time. All right. But if anyone would like to catch up on our current uh, situation, just go to ElliottWave.com slash right. Fannie Mae and they can see some video on it. All right. We're going to have to end our video conversation. Thanks very much, Bob Prechter, founder and CEO of Elliott Wave International. We're coming right back.